What's up guys? It's the Five Leader Rabbit here, aka Vince, and in today's video we're gonna be reviewing my grandfather's 2001 Mercedes S-Class. A little bit about this vehicle. It's a 2001 Mercedes S430 with 106,000 miles around about. It's the car I've been driving for the past two or three months. I love it and I'll show you why. Let's start with the easiest thing to talk about on a car, the engine. This car has a 4.6 liter V8 making 275. This engine is respectable enough to be able to make enough power for me to get out the way of an 18 wheeler getting in my way, but not enough power for me to get into trouble. Moving on to why every single person buys a Mercedes S-Class. Most people buy a Mercedes for the interior quality. Sometimes they buy it for performance and quality, but this one has a lot of interior quality. For example, the nice leather seats are heated, which is really, really nice in this really, really cold weather. It has Bose speakers, which sound amazing, and I'll show you that in a few seconds. But my favorite thing, one of my favorite things, is the back. A lot of times you'll get glare out of that back window. This car has an amazing solution to that problem. A nice glare shield comes up. It's, you're not going to see it on camera because the sun's right behind me and the exposure and all that, but it still helps a lot when you're driving to school, to work, wherever, because the headlights will shine into your mirror into your eyes, and that sucks. It also has sport suspension. They can have up to three different levels of sport, comfort, and I'm assuming track, but I haven't messed with it that much. It's got air suspension, which you can see here, Airmatic, vehicle rising, which helps a lot when I'm trying to get into the driveway that's lifted a little bit higher than I think it should be. As you can see, those headrests are in my way, and I can't see. Another solution that this car can fix. You can see that button right there? If I push that button, that is just amazing, and I'm so glad it has that feature. This is the control panel for the speakers. And if I go to sound, like this, you have bass, treble, fader, and balance features. Even for a 2001, I can choose whether I want my, my songs to be a lot of bass, a little bass, or a lot of treble, a little bit of treble, which is really, really nice. A friend of mine has a brand new Honda Civic, and his does not have that feature. One thing I forgot to say about the seats, which are right next to me, they do have active ball steering that I can change with a little knob on the left side to inflate or deflate depending on how depending on how my back to feel. I'm back in the back seat to show you something that I find absolutely hilarious about this car. Right below the window controls, I can take this, I can push it, and it comes right out to reveal a little pocket, a charger port or cigarette lighter, and yeah, and then I can put it right back up and no one will ever know it's there. A lot of times, you'll be in your car and your feet will get cold. Another thing that this car can fix. It has vents in the bottom to heat your feet up. And it has lighting so you can see what's at the bottom of the floor. Sometimes, you know, you're looking to fancy in the back seat of your brand new Mercedes from 2001, and you're like, hmm, I wonder how I look right now. Well, if I push this, I have a nice little mirror. And I could see myself and fix all my hair was a little badly fixed that. All right, and now I'm ready to go to the nice party. Something else about this car that I love that I don't really use that often is the sunroof. It's there, it works, it's power, which would be really, really nice on a very hot summer day. But I don't really think about it that often. I'd rather just use the AC because I'm more comfortable that way. This car does also have plenty of trunk space. Now, this is my grandfather's car, so there is a lot of junk in it, but take my word for it, there's enough trunk space for about two to three bags of luggage plus a human body, or just four bags of luggage. I mean, there's plenty of room. There's, if there was stuff wasn't here, I would fit perfectly, but no, it's just awkward stuff. But I'll be able to fit here with my luggage and a bed and still be able to well, you know, a sleeping bag, I would still be able to go to sleep here, which is 
a little weird, but also re really, really nice. The automatic transmission in this car has S mode you use for daily driving, W mode that you use for when you're in the snow. And it has shifting that you can go side to side, which shows up on the screen there. Right now I'm in W for snow, S for daily driving, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. How the shifting works in this car, you set it to whatever gear you want it to stop shifting at. So if you set it to first, it'll stop at first. If you set it to second, it'll stop at second, but it will still downshift down to first if it needs to, if that makes sense. Basically, it's not a shifter or what gear you in, it's the limit of what gear it will go to. And drive is just the highest, which is five. I did also say the sound is really nice. It's really nice. Of course, every car is not perfect. And I will show you what I don't like about the car in a few seconds. The car is old, 16 years old. And they didn't really think about a lot of things when they were building the car. Like the telephone they put in the car was cool for about two years before everyone started having phones with them anyways. The speakers that I praised about earlier have one drawback. No Bluetooth or aux cord, which sucks. Did buy this little adapter, which is an attempt at making it better, but it looks so out of place in this car. So let's say you went to Chick-fil-A and got something to drink. Well, unfortunately, you better hold it. The cup holder is right here. Can you see it? It's right there. This is almost big enough to fit, you know, a water bottle, maybe a medium drink. Not really big enough to fit anything else. And also, it likes to move around a lot. So if your drink's in here, it's gonna go like this at every other turn, and these turns, it might just close on itself and spill on you completely. That's something I hate about this car. This car has enough power to be able to get you to and from where you need to be going, but sometimes I wish I had more. Like for example, I was talking about an 18 wheeler. I was in my car, I was driving to school in the morning, and it was in the left two lanes, merging over into the far right lane, my lane. Now, I had to speed up to get out of his way. That is a little bit scarier than you think it actually is, but if I had a little bit more power, I probably would have been way safer in that situation. This car, being 16 years old, has a few mechanical issues. For example, when I started up on a cold morning, it has the sound of the radiator fan hitting the shroud, I think. I'm not sure. I was told not to worry about it. Something else, the catalytic converter on the left side, something's up with it. It still works, it still passes emissions perfectly fine, but it's probably loose or something with the fittings because it's rattling against the rest of the engine, which makes a really, really bad exhaust note. I'll show you here. Something else, the key is old, and you replace that, and the brakes, they work. They don't make any squeaking noise, but that message keeps coming up. But uh, I'll show you the exhaust issue that I was talking about with the catalytic converter. Let me just roll down the window. Power windows, by the way. I guess it doesn't make it when it's warm, but I'll show you a better clip later. But since I guess it's warm, I may as well show you an actual exhaust clip. All right guys, I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what I can do better, what I can improve on, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.